Hi, and welcome to the first video in the regulation section of our course. This video is going to deal with an overview of regulation in biological systems. I figured I'd start with this picture of the Serengeti because the Serengeti is a complex biological system. But of course, all biological systems are complex. Even the simplest single-celled organisms that we know of, like this mycoplasma, are incredibly complex systems. The reason that biological systems can be this complex is because they're regulated. Regulation is a universal property of biological systems across all domains. And the question we're going to be answering in this video is, how are biological systems regulated? In this video, we're going to talk about an overview of biological regulation. And of course, we're going to have examples. I've deliberately chosen examples that we haven't talked about in previous videos in this course, and they're going to span all realms of the biological systems on Earth. And after this overview, we're going to look specifically at feedback and how feedback functions in regulation in biology. It's important to remember that regulation is a universal property of biological systems. We see it at all levels in biology. All biological systems use the same basic regulatory logic. We're going to look at four major types of regulatory logic that we see in biology. We're going to look at positive regulation, negative regulation, double negative regulation, and then we're going to look at feedback regulation. Let's start with positive regulation. In a positive regulatory system, more of one thing gets you more of the next thing. Let's consider any system with two different interacting components, which we'll refer to as A and B. In a positive regulatory framework, A has a positive effect on B. The more of A we have, the more of B we have. This is what the word positive means here. It doesn't mean good, it just means more. Another way we describe this is often by saying that this is an upregulation system. A upregulates B. Let's look at one specific example. I've chosen algal blooms. What you see in this photo is a satellite picture taken off the European coast, and you can see the algal bloom from space. It's a massive temporary increase in the amount of phytoplankton in the water. It turns out that algal blooms are caused by increases in the amounts of specific nutrients that are added to the water, specifically iron, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The presence of increased amounts of these nutrients upregulates the growth of these algae, leading to this particular example of positive regulation. This is not a benefit to the ecosystem. In fact, certain algal blooms can be toxic to all of the other life that inhabit the area where the bloom is taking place. Positive doesn't mean good. It just means more. Negative regulation is the opposite. More of one thing gets you less of the next. If we go back to our A and B diagram, in a negative regulatory system, A has a negative impact on B. It decreases the amount of B. Another way of saying this is that A down-regulates B. And just like with positive regulation not meaning good, Negative regulation doesn't mean bad, it just means less. An example of negative regulation is contact inhibition in cell division. In a multicellular organism, if cells are dividing normally, they will not divide anymore once they sense that they're in the presence of neighboring cells. The signals being sent by all of the surrounding neighbors tell the dividing cells to stop dividing. That's negative regulation. And of course, it's incredibly beneficial to multicellular organisms not to have cells dividing when they shouldn't be. Negative doesn't mean bad, it just means less. Getting a little bit more complicated, we can start to think about things like double negative regulation, where less of one thing leads to more of the next. In order to get our heads around this, we're going to need to add another component to our system. We have A, B, and C. In a double negative regulatory system, A negatively regulates B, and B negatively regulates C. As a result, A has a positive effect on C. That's probably a little bit hard to get your head around unless we look at a specific example. So let's take one from ecology. Let's consider the interactions in the kelp forest ecosystems of the Pacific Northwest. We're going to look at three different components here, sea otters, sea urchins, and kelp. Sea otters prey on sea urchins, and sea urchins eat kelp. This is a classic double negative structure. As a result, the presence of sea otters leads to an increase in the amount of kelp in the ecosystem. Unfortunately, the decrease in the sea otter population in the 1900s due to hunting of sea otters led to an increase in the amount of sea urchins, which in turn led to a decrease in the amount of kelp. Once the sea otter populations were protected and the sea otter population was allowed to rebound, the sea urchin population was brought back down and the kelp population increased again. It's a classic example of double negative regulation. The last example that we're going to look at is feedback regulation. 
In feedback regulation, the results of a particular process affect that process. There are two different types of feedback systems that we should concern ourselves with. In a positive feedback relationship, the results of a process have an increase on the occurrence of that process. That's what positive means. The opposite, of course, is a negative feedback relationship where the results of the process have a decreasing effect on the occurrence of that process. It's important to understand that only negative feedback is regulatory in nature. In order to demonstrate this, I've set up two simple simulations. On the left, you see a negative feedback relationship, and on the right, you see a positive feedback relationship. Let's start this simulation. Let's start these two simulations and see what happens. You can see that in the negative feedback relationship, A and B remain within relatively narrow parameters. But in the positive feedback relationship on the right, you can see that A and B both quickly expand to fill up the entirety of the circles that represent the two parts of the system involved in that relationship. This is what we mean when we say that negative feedback is regulatory in nature. A and B remain within a relatively narrow range in a negative feedback relationship. Positive feedback, however, is not regulatory. It's acceleratory. More of A gets you more of B, which gets you more of A, which gets you more of B, etc. The positive feedback relationship is not sustainable. Living systems absolutely will use positive feedback in order to accomplish particular aspects of the system, but they are not regulatory in nature. Generally, they are transformative. They're moving the system from one state to another state. They're not keeping the system in steady conditions. We're going to look at examples of both positive feedback and negative feedback, and we're going to start with positive feedback. The example I've gone with here is the use of ethylene in fruit ripening. Ethylene is a hormone that fruits of plants produce as they ripen, and it causes the fruit to ripen more. As the cells of the fruit continue to ripen, they produce more ethylene, which leads to more ripening, which leads to more ethylene production, and this continues until the ripened fruit is produced. That is not a regulatory process. It is a transformative process. It's moving the unripened fruit to the ripened state in an accelerating capacity. As an example of negative feedback, let's look at how humans regulate their body temperature. If we consider our ideal body temperature as some set point around 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, when we get too cold, we engage in a variety of heating responses. This can be huddling together for warmth, or shivering of muscles, or seeking warmer areas. Assuming that we accomplish this process and we do not freeze to death, our body temperature will rise as a result and return to that ideal body temperature set point. Of course, if we get too hot, we have cooling responses that will bring our temperature back down, such as perspiration or other sorts of cooling behaviors. This is classic negative feedback. The resulting actions from being too hot or being too cold lead to a reversal in the system and bring our temperature either back down or back up, respectively. The most important thing about feedback and regulation more broadly is that no conscious thought is required in order for biological systems to regulate themselves. Regulation is simply an emergent property of the relationships between the interactions and the components of the biological system at every level in the system. This diagram is showing changes in human body temperature over the course of a particular day. You can see that it goes up, and then it goes back down, and then it goes back up again, and we have this constant oscillation between up and down around that set point. That is a classic indicator of steady state regulation in biological systems. In fact, we have a word for this. It's homeostasis, the steady state regulation of any biological system, be it our bodies, our cells, or the ecosystem writ large. No conscious effort needs to go into this. It is just something that happens as a result of the interactions of the components of the system, which is pretty cool. Once we put enough components together in a system, we go from these simple regulatory frameworks to the very complex phenomena that we see at every level of the biological system. These regulatory processes may seem simple, but since there are so many parts of biological systems, the resulting networks of interactions become incredibly complex as a result of those interactions. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can explain the regulatory logic structures that we see in living systems. You should be familiar with positive regulation, negative regulation, double negative regulation, and feedback regulation. Make sure that you can describe examples of each different regulatory logic structure in the biological system. You should be familiar with the examples that we discussed in this video, but you should also be familiar with other examples, both from prior videos and just from your own ability to learn and think about biology. 
Make sure that you can explain why only negative feedback is regulatory in nature and why positive feedback is functionally transformative or acceleratory. And I think it's also a good idea to be able to describe how complexity emerges from the regulatory interactions that we find in the biological system. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have so that you can get the answers that you need. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.